This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Valerie, Willie, Tempest, Tina, Timber. We pray that all of you are doing well. If you know that the Lord is for you, tap that screen. Come on. If you know that the Lord is for you, that's my wife over there. She's tapping. My wife says, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kiana. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. If you know that the Lord is for you, I'm about to shout. That song is powerful. I know that you are for me. I know that you are for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. Kadia says, good morning, evangelist. Good morning. All right. Well, let's go. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. Aisha says, good morning, evangelist Carol. Good morning. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. Pray for me to have a productive orientation and for me to catch on it. Father, we thank you that your hand is upon Shireen and that she will have a productive orientation and that you have anointed her, that she will be able to catch on and be able to give her supernatural recall the things that she will study and learn in Jesus' name. All right, everyone's ready. All right, Rosa, bless you, mighty woman of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One more time, everyone. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Come on, I believe and I receive. Come on, I believe and I receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe and I receive. Good. I believe and I receive. Good. Excellent. Excellent. I believe and I receive. Good. Excellent. I believe and I receive. All right. How many of you were blessed by the lesson yesterday? Bless you. How many of you were blessed by the lesson yesterday? How many of you were blessed by the lesson? Excellent, excellent, excellent. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We thank God. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Be glorified this morning. In the name of Jesus, be glorified. All right, let's go this morning. Let's go this morning. Let's finish up the life of Jacob. And even as we were talking yesterday, we want to, because even what we were dealing with yesterday actually actually is powerful about identity, okay? Because the blessing that Jacob received was his name being changed, okay? The blessing, Jacob says, I won't let you go except you bless me. And the blessing that he received was a name change, and we told you that a name deals with character and destiny. So when God changed Jacob's name, he changed his character 
and he changed his destiny. So everything flows out of your identity. Okay, everything flows out of your identity. Okay, we told you yesterday, uh, freedom is tied to your identity. Okay, freedom flows out of your identity. That is why you always see God changing people's name in scripture. Uh, write this down, Simon slash Peter. Write that down, Simon slash Peter. Simon slash Peter. Okay, Simon slash Peter. Thank you for sharing to Facebook. Good morning, D. Arthur. Good morning, Michelle. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay? Hallelujah. Simon Peter. The word Simon means shifting sand. Write that down. The word Simon means shifting sand. The word Peter means a rock. Okay? So you got two names. You got Simon, shifting sand, Peter, a rock. So God changes his name from Simon to Peter. Simon means shifting sand, unstable. Peter means a rock. Therefore, Mona Lisa, the Lord, when he changes his name, he changes his character and changes his destiny. You see Simon go from a person who was unstable to a person who is stable. You go from one who is uh, timid to one who is bold by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the enemy's job, Lenore, is to get you, to defeat you, to destroy you while you're Simon so that you never become Peter. The enemy... Regina, the enemy, Shireen, the enemy, Rosa, wants you to be stuck in Simon so you never become Peter. He wants you to focus on unstable because he knows that you are stable. Good morning, James. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bless you, man of God. So we're talking about identity through the life of Jacob. Everything flows out of your identity. Everything flows out of your identity, okay? Your, your prayer life cannot be effective if you don't know who you are. You cannot receive the promises of God if you don't know who you are. You can't come before God boldly if you don't know who you are. You'll come as a beggar instead of a priest. You'll come to him with your hand out instead of your hand up. I don't know about some of you, but when I was young, when I went to church, I used to hear the deacons pray. And they used to always say, please, Jesus, please, Jesus. It was a begging mentality. And it was because they did not know who they were. Good morning, Evangelist Bryant. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so most of the people in church would be begging God, please, Lord, do this. Uh, come by here. All of these things people would say, 
but it, it, it flowed out of not knowing who they were. So when you don't know who you are, then you cannot appropriate the things that God has for you. So identity is very crucial. It's very crucial. As long as you believe you're not worthy, then your whole walk with God will be affected. As long as you have the wrong view and the wrong perspective of God, you'll have the wrong perspective of yourself. And we talked about this yesterday, how uh, Jesus asked the question, who do you say I am? Peter answers by saying, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. When he does that, Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father. Right after that, Jesus says to him, thou art Peter. In other words, now that you know who I am, let me tell you who you are. And that's where we stopped yesterday. The reason why people do not know who they are, because they don't know who God is. Okay? So in order to know who you are, you've got to know who God is. You need an encounter with God. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Thank you. Hallelujah. So let's talk about that because one of the uh, one of the biggest issues in the body of Christ is unforgiveness. One of the biggest issues in the body of Christ is unforgiveness. One of the biggest issues in the body of Christ is unforgiveness. Okay, when we fail to forgive others, but most of all, we fail to forgive ourselves because we have a distorted view of God. We have a distorted view of God. We have a distorted view of forgiveness. Most people do not know what forgiveness is. They do not know. And the what we've been taught over the years is not forgiveness. Okay, You've got to understand forgiveness through the word of God, okay? You need a revelation of how God thinks about you. Come on, this morning, come on, somebody help me say, Lord, give me a revelation of how you think about me. You need a revelation of how God thinks about you, Rosa. You need a revelation, Lenore, of how God thinks about you. You need a revelation, D. Arthur. You need a revelation, Valerie, Tina. You need a revelation, Evangelist Bryant. You need a revelation, June, Mona, Lisa. You need a revelation of how God thinks about you. Hallelujah. You need a revelation. Kadia. You need a revelation, Aisha, of how God thinks about you. We'll pray for a lot of things, but we won't pray for a revelation of how God thinks about you. And until you get a proper perspective of who God is, a proper perspective of how God thinks about you, your whole life will be off. Good morning, Felicia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. Okay, so until, thank you, Aisha, until you get a revelation, Felicia, of how God thinks about you, everything else will be off. Everything else will be off. That is why a lot of people have a distorted view of God and a distorted view of other people because how they see themselves. So how you see you, you, pro you project it on others. 
Some of you don't love yourself, so you don't think people love you. It's the uh, it's the who is it? Uh, you remember the ten spies? You remember the ten spies who came back with an evil report? They said we were as grasshoppers in their sight, and so were we in our own sight. See, they saw themselves as grasshoppers, and they thought that the giant saw them the same way. But it wasn't how the giant saw them. It was how they saw themselves. Okay, They saw themselves incorrect. Okay, And let me share this with you. It is possible, watch this, it is possible to see God right and see yourself wrong. Even though you see God right, it is possible to see God right and see yourself wrong. Because even in that text, they saw God right, but they saw themselves wrong. It's not enough to see God right. You've got to see yourself right also. okay. It's not enough to just see God right, you need to see yourself right also. So we brag about what God can do and this and that, but you need to see yourself right. God can do that, but he wants to do it through you. Thank you, Mona Lisa. That's a bomb right there. That's a bomb right there. It is possible to see God right and see yourself wrong. Good morning, Regina. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Okay? So it is possible, Regina, to see God right and yet see yourself wrong. Notice the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can, write that down, I can through Christ. Come on. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can through Christ. I can through Christ. Good morning, Tara. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Good morning. Blessings to you. Okay. So I can, good, do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can through Christ. Okay. So you just don't put the emphasis on through Christ. You've got to put the emphasis also, June, on I can. You remember what I told you before? Write this down. Write this down because uh, this is so needed. This is so needed to have a proper perspective of God and have a proper perspective of yourself okay you need a proper perspective of god lenore and a proper perspective of yourself write that down god man god man okay without god i can't without man god won't okay let me say that again. Without God, I can't. But without man, God won't. There's a partnership there, Regina. There's a partnership there, June. There's a partnership, God and man, heaven and earth. So God has ordained it that way. In Genesis Chapter 1, God said, let us make man 
and let them have dominion. So the dominion is in us. God gave dominion to man. So without God, I can't. But without man, God won't. That's why throughout scripture, God is always looking for a man. When it came to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, God got a man. His, man, his name was Moses. When it came time for God taking the people into the promised land, he looked for a man. His name was Joshua. Come on. God is always looking for a man. Why? Because man is the only one who has dominion on the earth. So you've got to see it properly. Without God, I can't. The Lord said, without me, you can do nothing. But through me, you can do all things. And many times the world is hurting. The world is paying a price because we're sitting back waiting on God instead of using the authority and dominion he's given us to handle things. Come on, tap that screen if you're receiving thus far. Tap that screen if you're receiving. You need a proper perspective of God, and you need a proper perspective of yourself. Okay? Let me show you. Those of you just coming on, I need you to, to pray this. Lord, give me a revelation of how you think about me. Come on. Lord, give me a revelation of how you think about me. God bless you, Sister Diamond. Sister E, I see blessings to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Come on. Those of you just coming on. Those of you just coming on. You need good. Lord, give me a revelation of how you think about me. Okay. Now watch this. Watch this. Somebody say, Pastor Bryant, give us an example. Come on. I hear what you're saying, Pastor Bryant, but give me an example from the scripture. Come on. Give us an example from the scripture, what you're talking about. You're, you're saying, pray for a revelation of how God thinks about me, but can you give me an example from scripture that will help me? Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Thank you. Good, June. Good, Sister Diamond. Good. Watch this. Good, Lenore. Thank you. Watch this. Here's an example. You remember uh, David? And when Nathan confronted David because of David's sin, okay? Listen to what God tells David. God was telling David there was no need for you to take another man's wife. Watch this. He said, I gave you everything. Listen to the scripture. He said, I gave you everything. And if that wasn't enough, I would have given you more. David did not know who God was. See, you need a revelation of what God thinks about you. Some of you are willing to move heaven and earth for your children and for your spouses and for your grandchildren, but you need to know as much as you love them, God loves you a million times more. And just like you would do and move heaven and earth for them, God would do it for you. 
God wanted David to know you didn't have to do that. Anything you needed, anything you desired, I would have gave it to you. Lenore, you need to know that God is willing to do it for you. That is why we go to God for certain things and we don't go to God for other things. Because we want to save ourselves. We want to handle things on our own. Because we really don't know if God will do it. We really don't know if God has it, so to speak. We think God has a, a factory and he's limited in what he has. But when you read Genesis chapter 1, the first thing you learn about God is he is a creator. Did you see that, June? The first thing, Regina, you learn about God in the scripture is he's a creator. That means that he creates out of nothing. That means whatever you desire, if it doesn't exist, God can create it. But you need a revelation of what God thinks about you. You're not dealing with a man. You're not dealing with somebody else. You have never had anyone in your lifetime, including your parents. You have never met anybody in your lifetime, including your parents, including your spouse that loves you unconditionally like God. And because in the natural, uh, your parents might not have done for you, your spouse might not have done for you, and so you have a distorted view. So you believe that if anything is going to happen, I'm going to do it myself. How many of you have said that? Well, I got to make sure I take care of me and my kids because you have a distorted view. You think that you have to make it happen. And you won't trust God to provide for you. So you would rather work so hard instead of trust God. And then you'll say things well, like, well, God wants me to do this and God wants me to do that. And you know what the Bible says. The Bible says that uh, if a man does not work, he doesn't eat. Now, what does that have to do? People love to say that scripture all the time. But they never look at the context. God is your provider. Write that down. God is your provider. Write that down, please. God is your provider. Write it down. Declare it. God is my provider. Good, Lenore. Good, Rosa. Good, Diamond. God is my provider. Good. Come on. Declare it in the atmosphere. Anytime. Anytime. Good, Felicia. Good, Regina. Good, Aisha. Good, Tina. Anytime you depend on a man, you limit yourself. Anytime you depend on a man. Good, June. You limit yourself. Anytime you depend on a job to provide for you, you limit yourself. Anytime you depend on a spouse to provide for you, you limit yourself. Anytime you depend on yourself to provide for you, you limit yourself. I don't care if you were a billionaire, you would still be limited. I don't care what you have you would still be limited. And we tend to look to man instead of looking to God. And you put too much pressure on a person because a person is limited. You can only work but so many hours. And no matter how many hours you work, you're only going to get a certain amount of money. And then the more money you make, the more money you're going to be taxed. So I would rather look to God who is unlimited. Lord have mercy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
I decree and declare I don't know who this is for. I decree and declare that you will move into a season that will be sweatless. I decree and declare that you will move into a season that will be sweatless. No longer will you work harder, but I believe and decree and declare that you're moving into a season that will be sweatless, that you will not look to yourself, but you will look to God. It will be sweatless because God shall make it happen and not you. God will make it happen and not you. Good. You're moving into a season that is sweatless. Notice God told Adam when, when God was passing out the curse, he said you will work from the sweat of your brow. He said you will work from the sweat of your brow. So the sweating toil comes from the curse. God does not want you to toil. God does not want you to toil, Tara. He doesn't want you to toil. Your days of toiling are over. Your days of toiling are over. Your days of trying to make things happen is over. Hallelujah. So you need a proper perspective of who God is. You need a proper perspective of who God is. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Write this down, these numbers. Thirty-eight and twelve. Write those two numbers down. Thirty-eight and twelve. There you go, Regina. Your days of toiling are over. Good, James. Thirty-eight and twelve. Okay, let me show you something. Thirty-eight and twelve. Thank you. Lenore, 38 and 12. Write those numbers down. Thank you. 38 38 and 12. Good. Does anybody know what those two numbers represent in the Bible? Anybody know what those two numbers represent in the Bible? 38, John chapter 5, 12, Mark chapter 5, 38, John chapter 5, a man was at the pool for 38 years, 12, Mark chapter 5, good, it does mean that, good, 38, John chapter 5, a man was at the pool for 38 years. 12, Mark chapter 5, the woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. The reason why I bring up those numbers, 38 years the man was at the pool. He had a spirit of infirmity. John chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, Mark chapter 5. Why do you bring up those things? Watch this. The man tried to fix it on his own, and he could not fix it. Once he encountered Jesus, once he allowed and depended on the Lord, what he could not do in 38 years, he did it in 38 seconds. What the woman could not do in 12 years, she did it in 12 seconds. Hear me. When you trust God, it is sweatless. 
When you trust God, it is sweatless, Lenore. This man could not fix his situation, Tara. 38 years, he stayed at a pool. No progress. One encounter with Jesus. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? The man said, made a bunch of excuses. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And what he could not do in 38 years, he did it in 38 seconds. When you encounter the Lord, when you have the right perspective of who God is, what you've been struggling with all of your life, God, just like that. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we need an encounter with God. I don't need to go to church to be entertained. I need to encounter God because if you encounter God, your life will never be the same. You got to stop saying you know God. You got to say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Come on. You got to put aside what people told you about God. You got to put aside what you read about God. You need an encounter with God. Because if the truth be told, if the truth be told, most people don't know God. Hear me. Don't get offended. Don't get offended. If the truth be told, most people don't know God. Everything you know, somebody else told you. Everything you know, somebody else told you. And you've never stopped and questioned it. We think questioning things are wrong. Questioning things are good. That is why I know God like I do today. Because when people were trying to tell me things about him, I did not believe it. And I always question it. I always question it. When they were telling me stuff in church, I said, well, that don't sound right. You say this, but the Bible says that. See, you've got to question because you've got to come to your own understanding. Most of you are basing God off what somebody told you. What if they were off? What if they didn't know God? That's what tradition is about. Tradition is just passing things on that you were taught. But you've got to know him for yourself. Lord, give me an encounter of who you are. That's why this time, I call it a divine pause. That's why this time is important. Be still and know. God wants you to know. He doesn't want you to know through a man. He doesn't want you to know through a woman. That's good. God uses people. But God wants you to get in your secret closet and know him for yourself. Can you explain about the man in the pool? I understand about the lady for the 12 years. Yeah, the man at the pool... The Bible said he was sitting there and he was surrounded by a bunch of people, blind, halt, and withered. And all of them were waiting on the troubling or the moving of the water. The Bible said at a certain season, an angel would come down and trouble the water. And whoever stepped in first would be healed from whatsoever disease they had. So the man stayed there for 38 years and never got better. Never got better. But one encounter with Jesus changed his life forever. And what he thought he could not do, he was able to do it. Because really what that speaks of, Lenore, all he could have did it 38 years ago. He could have did it 38 years ago. But the system he was believing in did not work. The system he was believing in only worked for one person. Notice what the scripture said. Only the first person that stepped in the water after it was troubled was healed. So the system 
did not work for everybody. It only worked for one person. And many of you are trusting in a system that does not work for everybody. When I was coming up and they told me things about God, I would say that's not true because that's not working for everybody. God's system works for everybody. Hallelujah. Tap that screen. My God. Tap that screen if you're receiving this morning. Let, let me share something with you. Okay. Go to Isaiah chapter 6, please. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Hallelujah. You need a balance. You need a balance. You've got to get to know God for yourself. And whatever somebody else tells you should be confirmation to what God has already spoke to you. Anything somebody else tells you should be confirmation to what God spoke to you unless you are not studying, unless you're not spending time with God. God raises up pastors. He has uh, the five-fold ministry. God does all that. But ultimately, you've got to know God for yourself. And most of you, me included, back in the day, we only knew what people told us. But for, as a child, I always questioned things. And children will do that. Any of you who have children or grandchildren, you know that. Why is that, Nana? Why is that, Papa? Why is the sky blue? Then you tell them. Then they say, why is that? And why? That's how you learn. There's nothing wrong with that. But guess what they used to tell us? How many of you people told you that don't question God? How many people told you that? Don't question God. How many people told you that? And guess what? You can question God all day. You may not get the answer. See? That, that's another thing I learned. There are some answers you'll never get, but you got to be okay with that because God is who he says he is, whether he answers you or not. Good. Yeah. Don't you know, you may not question God, but God already knows what you're thinking. God can handle your questions. Your, your questions is not going to cause God to stop being God. Your questions is not going to stop God from being God. And don't think because you ask him those questions, he's obligated to answer. Okay. Isaiah chapter 6. Let's go there. Isaiah chapter 6. Man, we're already at 8 o'clock. I don't know how that happens. 754. All right. Let's go. Isaiah chapter 6. Watch this. I'm going to read this, and then we're going to talk about this a little bit. I'm going to give you a word, and then we'll end on that. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Listen to what I said, Isaiah said. Thank you. Isaiah Lenore, he said, I saw also the Lord. When did you see the Lord? In the year that King Isaiah died. My question to you this morning, what needs to die in order for you to see God for who he is? What needs to move out of your way in order for you to see God for who he is? Mona Lisa, Regina, June, Wendy, James, DeArthur, Michael, Evangelist Bryant, Kadia, Kiana, Tara. What needs to move out of the way, Felicia, in order for you to see God? There is something stopping you. There is something blocking you, Lenore, Rosa, from seeing God 
for who he is. The prophet said, Tara, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. I saw him. Before he died, I didn't see him. But when he was moved out of the way, I saw him. You got to move religion out of the way. You got to move what you were told or taught out of the way. You got to move it so you can see who God is. Because when you see him for who he is, guess what? When you see him for who he is, then you will know. Not what grandma told you, not what pastor told you, not what your mother told you, not what your father told you, not what the Sunday school teacher told you. Now you will see God for who he is. And that's called a conviction. Now you will be convicted based on you and God. Not what somebody else said, but you and God. Verse 2. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. Twain he covered his face. Twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. One cried unto the other, Holy, holy, the Lord of hosts. Good morning, Sharon. Blessings to you, woman of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Watch this. Verse number five, Isaiah six and five. Then said I, woe is me. Write that down, please. Write that down. Verse one, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord. Listen to what he said, Aisha. When King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord. Verse number five, then said I, Woe is me. In other words, once he saw God for who he was, then God showed him who he was. Lord have mercy. Did you catch that? When you encounter God, the first person he shows you about is you. You can't have a prophecy about everybody else. You've got to see yourself. And that is what's wrong with most people. We can see everybody else but we cannot see ourselves. When you encounter God, God is a mirror. A mirror doesn't show you the person next door. The mirror shows you you. Hallelujah. Come on. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Then said I, woe is me, I am undone. Upward look, inward look. Write that down, upward, inward. Anytime you have an upward look, Rosa, it will cause an inward look. Good, Tina. Watch those explosives now. Anytime you have an upward look, Tina, you will have an inward look. Anytime you have an upward look, you see God, okay? Upward, inward, outward. Write those three words down, please. Upward. Those three words, upward, he saw God. Inward, he saw himself. Outward, he saw others, okay? Upward, he saw God. Inward, he saw himself. Outward, he saw others. God's focus is not on you seeing others. God's focus is on you seeing yourself. I don't have time to figure out what you're doing. I don't have time to point out what you're doing wrong. Why? Because it's a 24-7 job getting Michael straight. Okay? Michael has enough things going on in his life that God needs to work on him. I don't have time to police you. 
And that's what people are doing. They're trying to police everybody else, but they won't allow God to show them themselves. Let me close with this. Let me close with this. I'm in perfect timing. Let me close with this. Write that word, forgive down, and let's close with that. Forgive. Forgive. Write that word down, forgive. Forgive. Yesterday we talked about that, <clears throat> that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Forgive. I wrote it like that on purpose, forgive. There's two words, a prefix and a suffix. The word for means before. Write that down. The prefix for, F-O-R, means before. Write that down. The prefix Aisha for means before. The suffix Lenore. The second word, the suffix means release. Okay. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Diamond. Forgive. For before give release. What is true forgiveness you release them before they ask lord have mercy you release them before they ask you release them before you see anything changing romans 5 and 8 god demonstrated his love toward us while we were yet sinners christ died that means he released you, Felicia, before you ask him. Father, we thank you for the seed sown. Now we speak back increase, abundance, and favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you catch that? God demonstrated his love toward us while we were yet sinners. He died. He, when you were against him, Regina, he died for you. When you were against him, June, when you were against him, Diamond, when you were against him, Tara, he died for you. He released you before you ask. That's what true forgiveness is. It's God releasing you before you ask him. You know what we do? We say forgiveness, I'm not going to forgive him unless I see something different. What if God did that with you? You would never be forgiven. What if God handled you that way? And he waited for you to change before he forgave you. We would be in a whole lot of trouble. How many times have you went to God praying about the same thing and you said, Lord, forgive me. And then next week, you did the same thing. Next week, you did the same thing. Next week, you did the same thing. What if God handled you like you handle other people? You need to learn how to release people. Okay? We're going to talk about this thing we call uh, a couple of people asked me yesterday. We got to talk about this thing we've heard about forgive and forget is that in the bible forgive and forget is that in the bible forgive and forget okay i remember when i was a kid i was riding my bike in uh gordon hikes quorum and i hit a hit something flipped over and my leg was bleeding my, the back of my leg got caught in the chain link of the bike. To this day, I have that scar on my leg. 
Watch this. When I look at it, I remember it, but it does not hurt anymore. Let Lord have mercy. You know you're healed when you're able to remember it, but it does not hurt anymore. That's the difference between a, a wound and a scar. Hear me now. I see it every day. I take a shower, I see it, but it doesn't hurt. Why? Because it's no longer a wound, it's a scar. It's no longer a wound, it's a scar. It's not open, it's healed. Lord have mercy. And there are things people have done to you. You remember it, but it does not hurt you. Lord have mercy. And as when you remember something, and it hurts you and all these other things, then you're not healed from that. Because God will make it so. Yes, that happened. Yes, I see that person, but I'm healed. It has no power over me anymore. See, forgiveness is about you, not them. Forgiveness is about you, not them. I'm releasing you for me. I'm releasing you for me. Because I know at the end of the day, amen, I needed to hear this. Yes, I'm healed. It has, yeah. So you got, I see that scar all the time, Lenore. But it, it, it doesn't hurt no more. So it's okay for you to remember what somebody did but not to remember it to make you want to act against them. Yeah, it happened. So you are aware. See, the remembering allows you to be aware, okay, so you don't go blindly back into a situation, okay? The remembering allows you to be aware so you don't go back blindly into the situation. So if you borrowed money from me and did not pay me back, I forgive you, I release you, but I'm not going to go back and deal with you in that way no more. Okay. So it, it, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean I haven't forgiven you. Okay. But I'm aware you showed me who you are. And that's okay. I'm not upset with you. I had a situation happen like that. And my wife and me both agreed, hey, leave it alone. We forgive those people. And we did. And we did. But it releases you. It releases you. Because you can't have that bitterness, animosity, anger inside of you. And that's what the devil wants. He wants you to carry that. Okay. And thank God you do remember. You know why? Because some people will try to come back in your life like, like nothing ever happened. Some people will try to come back in your life like nothing ever happened. Well, and, and this is the one they use all the time. Well, if you're supposed to be saved, then you're supposed to forgive me. I did forgive you. And because I'm saved, I got discernment. And I know who you are now. Now, now, watch this. When we got together, I didn't know who you was. But since you did what you did, now God revealed to me who you are. And now I know. See, before I fell for that. But now I know. Thank God I remember. Thank God I realized what you did. Because before I was blind. I was so much and I won't say love. It wasn't love. I was so much uh, in my emotions that it, I did not see you for who you was. But now, the old song said, I can see clearly now, the rain is gone. Lord have mercy. I can see clearly now. And that's okay. I, I forgave you, and I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Okay. 
All right, tap that screen. I got to go. You guys have been awesome this morning. It has been my pleasure and privilege uh, to meet you every morning, Monday through Friday. We have had an excellent word. Yes, my wife says go on the YouTube channel and subscribe. A time of empowerment. Please, ma'am, please, sir, go on the YouTube channel and subscribe and write a comment. This was an awesome, as usual, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. If you look up on the screen, a time of empowerment with Michael Bryant. Just put time of empowerment, Michael Bryant, in the YouTube. Go on there and subscribe, please. Go and subscribe. A time of empowerment. Go on YouTube. Put in a time of empowerment, Michael Bryant. And you can subscribe and comment on there. Okay? All right. All right. Remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, walk in righteousness. Number five, awake to righteousness. Number six, expect divine intervention. Number seven, be fruitful. Number eight, multiply. Number nine, replenish. Number 10, subdue. Number 11, stay connected to God. Number 12, ask God for a revelation of how he thinks about you. You need an encounter with God. When you get it, your life will never be the same. Okay, People cannot... Uh, Make me go back and forth, in and out, up and down. You know why? Because I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with God. Keep seed in the ground. Be fruitful. Be yes, 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 yes. Okay? Hallelujah. See, when you have an encounter with God, what you know, write this down, what you know cannot be taken from you. Write that down. What you know cannot be taken from you. See, what you believe, somebody come with a better argument, you'll change what you believe. But what you know cannot be taken from you. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You got to move from believing to knowing. You got to move from believing, Tara, to knowing. Yeah, you believe, but you need to know. You've got to move from, by now, you should know. By now, you should know. Good, Regina. What you know cannot be taken from you. What you believe, you done switch your belief. You, you done switch your belief. And the reason why you switched it, because you didn't know it. But once you know it, you won't change that. You won't change what you know. I know what I know. So you can talk all day. I have no problem when people want to come and... And they want to pass out their literature and say all this stuff. So, okay, now. Now, you, I'm going to allow you to talk, but then I'm going to talk. Because you're not going to persuade me. You're not going to persuade me. Because I know in whom I have believed. So, you're not going to persuade me. Lord have mercy. All right. All right, write this down. You all know every Friday is pastoral favor day. Write it down. The people came up with that. Today is Friday, pastoral favor day. Today is June 12th. Today is June 12th, Friday. We are moving through. We are moving through this month of our consecration. Okay? We're moving through this month of our consecration. Okay? We're going to the end of this month, June 30th. Okay. All right. Blessings. Kiana, did you get my paper? Kiana, did you get? I sent the email to you. Did you get it? Kiana? Kiana, did you receive the paper you sent me? Pastoral favor day. That's just. Yes, I. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. <clears throat> Every Friday is an opportunity for you <clears throat> to sow into my life personally if you choose to. 
But every day we give you an opportunity to sow into the ministry, every day. The Bible said, let those who have been taught communicate back to those who teach, okay? So you pray, you talk to God, okay? But it's our honor and privilege to come and share with you. Uh, somebody write down Sunday, 9 o'clock. Sunday, 9 o'clock. Lord, say the same. We will be here Sunday, 9 o'clock. Sunday, 9 o'clock. Sunday, 9 o'clock. Meet me on Facebook. Meet me on Periscope Sunday at 9. All right, you have a fruitful day. You have a productive day. Shalom. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. Thank you, Aisha. Blessings to you all. We love you. I'm sowing. Yes, Lord. You're blessing me to bless him. Amen. To God be the glory. That's what it's about. When you are open, always remember this. Always remember this. Write this down as we leave. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Write that down. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Write that down. Keep that close to you. When the student is ready... The teacher will show up. Write that down. Write that down. When the student is ready, Mona Lisa, the teacher will show up. When the student is ready, Regina. When the student is ready, June, Felicia, Aisha. When the student is ready, the author, James, Wendy, Lisa, the teacher will show up. Somebody said, man, I wish I would have known that before. No, because you wasn't ready. You wasn't ready. You wasn't ready. Yeah. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. There are things that you are now coming into. And you said, I wish I would have known. You, you couldn't have known it before. You know why? Because you wasn't ready. You wasn't open to it. But when you are open, God is obligated to show up. See? When you draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to you. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. When you say, Lord, I'm ready, and God will show up. See? So you can't know anything until you open. You got to be ready for it. Before your life was cluttered. Before your focus was on other things. But now you are ready. And when you're ready, the teacher shows up. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are a teacher. We thank you for showing up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We thank you. We don't take it lightly that you have shown up. We don't take it lightly that you have led us to truth. We thank you that our lives will never be the same again. All right, have a productive day. Have a fruitful day. God bless you. Lord, say the same. We'll see you 9 a.m. on Sunday. Go to the YouTube channel. Time of Empowerment, Michael Bryant. Go there, subscribe, go there, and make a comment, okay? God bless you.